Welcome to Morse Chapel. Are you new here? Let us know you stopped by. Fill out our online connect card at morschapel.org forward slash connect. Check us out online on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. Need prayer? Email us at prayer at morsechapel.org. Do you have youth or kids? So do we. Check out Morse Chapel Youth every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And Kids Connect every second and fourth Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Here's a few things coming up. Well, good morning and welcome to Moore's Chapel. We are so excited that each and every one of you are joining us today. We are a church from the little ones to the seniors and everyone in between. However you are today is perfect because God will meet you right where you are. Our mission here at Moore's Chapel is to reach the surrounding community, Cecil County and beyond for Jesus Christ. And our vision is witnessing thousands saved, healed, delivered and set free to be the people that God is creating you and me to be. I just want to take a moment right now before we get moving is to just say happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, um, all of the different types of mothers from, you know, uh, mothers, stepmothers, adoptive mothers, um, just mothers who, uh, you know, mother others. And there's not even a... Um, uh, familiar or whatever relationship, just, uh, we're just so thankful for the moms in our lives that, uh, continue to give us that mother love, that, uh, direction and that safe place in our lives. So, uh, we, we just thank you and have a happy mother's day. Enjoy, enjoy your, your day today. Um, and I do have, we do have just a couple of brief announcements as well. Uh, and the first announcement is that we are going to be starting up some new small groups, and that's going to be going on starting in June. I know we originally said April a while back, but we're going to be starting them in June. We're so excited about that. It's another opportunity for us to uh, get together and um, we'll get more details about the actual dates and times with that. Uh, but keep in mind, that's going to be starting in June. So just a few weeks from now. And uh, Peter is going to come on up, tell us about the youth. Come on up, Peter. Well, good morning, Morse Chapel youth and parents of youth. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal, energized Sunday morning wherever you guys are listening in. So I just have a couple announcements for youth. Because God is doing some amazing things in our youth, and I'm super, super excited about what is coming up in the future with our next generation here at Morse Chapel. In specific, this coming Wednesday, as we always do on Wednesday nights, at 6.30 p.m., we are having youth group, and God is doing some phenomenal things in our youth students. He is moving in their hearts and their lives. And this Wednesday, we are going to be having free Taco Bell. What, what? Can I get an amen? There is an anointing on a Taco Bell taco. Can someone say amen to that in the chat? But also, later on, it might bring out some devils, but that's okay. We're not going to talk about that. Um, but also, coming up with youth, we are starting a youth Bible study coming up on May 16th. And I am super excited. This is going to happen during the 9.30 a.m. service starting on Sunday mornings. 
And we are going to be breaking down the word of God. And I just really want to teach your youth, the next generation, how to read scripture. Because I wasn't really taught very well how to read scripture growing up. And that's something that I want to express to youth and really teach them how to break down the word of God and to apply it to their lives and to pray about it. So please come out 9.30 a.m. Bring your youth because I believe God is going to move in their lives. And he's going to teach them how to read the word of God. All right. God bless and have a phenomenal Sunday morning. Amen. Thank you, Peter. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of life. And we thank you for all of our moms who helped provide physical life to us, Lord. Not just that, but just, and even uh, the nurture and just so many good things about the moms. So we thank you, Lord. None of us would be here without our moms. So we are grateful for that. Lord, we uh, pray that you would be uh, with us this day as we celebrate uh, Mother's Day. I know for some, you know, including myself, you know, who my mom passed away this past October, um, we still want to, um, I'm still going to honor her and uh, her influence in, in my life. And Lord, help us to do that. Help us to honor the, the moms in our lives uh, the mom, the, the moms, the stepmoms, the um, spiritual moms that are just, you know, moms to us as we grow up in the faith and, and so many different um, kinds of moms, Lord. So God, uh, help us to reach out to those um, mothers, those who have mothered us in, in you and in life. Lord, we're so thankful uh, for their guidance and their leadership in our lives. Lord, uh, we also ask right now, Lord, that you would uh, be with anyone who has uh, lost a mom and uh, that they can, you know, find a way to celebrate uh, their mom in the midst of that loss as well. And uh, God, we pray that you would um, just right now that you would pour out your love and your grace on us, Lord, pour out your love and your grace. We just need that so much. I know I need it. Um, desperately. And so I pray that you would just pour that out on each and every one of us right now. Lord, I pray that you would give us eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see and ears to hear so that we're changed and transformed by your message, your message of love, grace, and truth. Lord, Lord, we surrender everything to you right now. We just surrender everything to you. We give our lives to you, Lord. We ask that you would just take us and shape us and mold us into the people that you're creating us to be. We want to give you a yes and amen to what you want in our lives because we know that that is, that is um, the best thing for us. God, for any of us out there who are, um, you know, heavy laden or, or carrying a burden, that you would uh, continue to uh, walk with us and, and lighten our burden, Lord, that you, by your, your love and your grace, you would just lighten uh, the burden and that we would walk in your victory. We would walk in your truth, Lord, that you would continue to empower us and strengthen us, especially in those areas where we feel uh, weak and unequipped. We thank you that you are the God who equips uh, your people that you equip us Lord and you equip us for um, for victory for victory in you Lord Lord we love you uh, we give you all the praise honor and glory for what you're doing in and through our lives and we pray this in the name of Jesus and everybody said amen let us now say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray as we pray together our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Since curse has long
for strength you are the one that is our provider you give us rest when we are weary you fill us with strength when we are weak you are enough and father I just ask that as we sing this song as we sang the songs to you today that you are looking down on us and that you are smiling to know that your people are here to worship you, that your people are here to do your will here on earth, that we are here to be your hands and your feet, to reach the lost, reach the thousands, the, the hundred thousands that, that do not know you, Lord. And I just pray that um, as we hear the message that you have laid on the heart of the one that will share it with us, Lord, that you will just open our hearts to receive what it is, Lord, to receive your grace, to receive your healing, to receive your provision, to receive your mercy. You are holy. You are holy. You are all that we need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
All right, so today's scripture reading is from John chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me, has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have received all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, God, that you are a God of grace and you are a God of truth. God, I thank you that you are a God that continuously reveals truth to us. God, I pray today that your Holy Spirit would convict our hearts, would um, speak truth to us, God, would speak life to us, but also remind us, God, of the power of your grace and your love that is towards us, that is extended in your Son, Jesus. We thank you for this word, God, today. I pray you would anoint Pastor Lori, God, pierce our hearts with this message. In Jesus' name, amen. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Soren Kierkegaard, the great Danish theologian from another century, tells us the story of a prince who was running an errand for his father one day in the local village. As he did so, he passed through a very poor section of the town. Looking through the window of his carriage, he saw a beautiful young peasant girl walking along the street. He could not get her off of his heart. He continued to come to the town day after day just to see her and to feel as though he was near her. He yearned, his heart yearned for her, but there was a problem. How could he develop a relationship with her? He could order her to marry him. It was in his power to do so, but he wanted this girl to love him from the heart willingly. He could put on his royal garments and impress her with his regal entourage and drive up to her front door with soldiers and a carriage drawn by six horses, but if he did this, he would never be certain that the girl loved him or was simply overwhelmed with his power, position, and wealth. The prince came up with another solution. As you may have guessed, He gave up his kingly robe and symbols of power and privilege. He moved into the village dressed only as a peasant. He lived among the people, shared their interests and concerns, and talked their language. In time, the young peasant girl grew to know him and then to love him. This is what Jesus has done for you and for me. The word became flesh. The king put aside his heavenly robes and his divine prerogatives. He came to us as one fully human and fully divine. Sometimes that's a truth that's hard for us to wrap around our minds. So the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen, past tense, his glory and the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So let's break this down a little. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. You know, God came in the flesh the person of Jesus Christ, first and foremost, because he, God, 
when he came into the flesh, wanted to dwell among us. That's always been God's heart, to dwell among the people, to dwell among you and me. And it's always been his heart from the very beginning, from the moment Adam and Eve stepped out of God's grace. God has been wanting to dwell back to dwell with humanity, to do life together with us. Even after we sinned and chose to go our own way, God still wanted to dwell with his people. God made a way. He made a way from the beginning so that we can know him. He made a way even before we sinned. He made a way to get us back because he knew exactly what was going to happen. He made a way that we could, he could fellowship with us even today and not only today but throughout eternity. God fellowships with us when we receive him into our heart. He fellowship, he dwells, he tabernacles with us. The Bible is God's love story to his people. It tells of the ways he continually sought, he continually, from the beginning to the end, continually sought to dwell with us, with broken humanity. He wanted to dwell with us. God, in the fullness of time, came in the person of Jesus Christ to free his people once and for all from the bondage of sin and death that entered the world. That's why he came. Now, before we invited Jesus into our lives, we were condemned as transgressors. We were condemned because of our own sins, because we chose to walk our own way. And when we walk out of God's grace, God calls that sin. John, the author of this book, said that we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus came full of grace and truth. Now, it's interesting that um, John writes here in the beginning where he says, you know, John was one of his original disciples. He was one of the ones where he heard God's voice say, follow me, you know, drop your nets, follow me. So John has seen the glory of God in Jesus from the time God called his name until the time where Jesus was resurrected or died on the cross and was resurrected. He traveled with him for three years. And I believe when John is saying that we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son, that what he's referring to is that the disciples, they saw Jesus face to face. Jesus is the reflection of the living God. Jesus is the exact representation of God. Like if we want to see what God looks like, all we have to do is look at Jesus. All we have to do is look at his life and the way that he lived. And a great way for us to do that is to pick up the Bible and to read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because we see the life of Jesus and the impact he had on so many through the pages of um, those gospel, those good news uh, books. And I encourage us to read those books if you haven't read them. And a great one to start with is the book of John. Now, we don't have time today to do an in-depth um, study of this, but, you know, to look at the glory of God and the reflection in, in, in his life uh, throughout the Gospels. But we do want to note a couple of things about Jesus and, and the goodness and the glory of God. You know, first and foremost, he came to seek and save the lost. I don't know if you've ever felt lost, but I know I have. And God came to seek and save all of the lost people. There's a lot of lost people out there now, and he wants to save them as well. He came to bind up the brokenhearted, to bind up our wounds and bring healing into our lives. We read story after story in the Bible about how Jesus went to um, people who were in desperate need of healing, uh, lepers, the blind, um, to uh, women, to, you know, 
folks that are outside of the Jewish uh, people, uh, which they called Gentiles back at that time, like Jesus was kind, um, he was compassionate, he, um, he took time for people that were right in front of him, he listened to them, he heard them, he saw them, and he healed them. You know, Jesus, when he came, he came to break down walls of separation. You know, there's so many walls of separation out there today, but Jesus, he came to break down every single wall that separates us from race to class to status to gender um, to, you know, Jew or Gentile. Um, He came to break down all of those walls, all of those walls that we build up. Jesus came full of grace and truth. He came full of grace and truth. You know, God's grace is um, the unconditional love and favor for you and me. His grace, he ex- continually extends it to us. Even, even, when, even after we've received him as Christ, he continually extends grace to us every single day. Every single day we are breathing, he extends grace to us. I don't know about how many of you, but I still make mistakes during the days. You know, and God, Jesus, he extends grace, his grace and compassion and love for each and every one of us. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, he talked about three main aspects of God's grace. There's more than that, but, you know, if you imagine... um, looking through a a diamond, like at the different, you can look at it through many different ways to see different aspects of God's grace. But we're going to touch on three of those aspects today of God's grace. The first one is God's provenient grace. This, This grace is probably one of my favorite aspects of grace, provenient grace. It's that willing that God does before we even know who he is, before we even know that we need a savior. It's that grace that woos us. And for all of you who didn't grow up into the church like me, I didn't grow up in the church, that grace was so beautiful that consistently wooed me closer into a personal relationship with him. That grace that, that, you know, pulls us out of darkness, if you've ever if you've ever um, felt that, it's that willing grace. It's that grace that brings us right up to the door, to the door where Jesus is knocking on our hearts. He's knocking on our hearts and he's saying, I'm here. I want to come in and dwell with you. That's the whole reason he came. I want to come and dwell and tabernacle with you, with you individually as a person. You know, before he dwelled in a, um, t- in a literal tent with a tabernacle, and he showed himself through a, pa- a, cloud, uh, a cloud and a pillar of fire back in the desert in the Old Testament, and they followed God around like that. And then Jesus came, and then they got to dwell with Jesus firsthand as a person. He came in the person of Jesus Christ. They got to dwell with him for, th- for three years when he revealed himself in, uh, as um, the Messiah. And now when we receive him, he, gets to, he wants to dwell in each and every one of us when we receive him as our Lord and Savior. And that provenient grace is that grace that woos us, that love in, in the story that I, the opening story that I talked about, that prince that came as a peasant, you know, because he wants to be with us. He wants to be with you. And if you don't know him, it's a grace that is even wooing you right now. Even at the sound of my voice, you're, you're feeling like, you know, whether it's your heart beating, um, you know, as, as Jesus gets closer and closer to you. And he, and he woos us to that point where we say, I want you to be part of my life. I want you to dwell with me, in me, because that's what happens. God dwells in us in the form of the Holy Spirit. And then when we say yes to that relationship, when we say yes, I want you, Jesus, in my life, when we say yes, 
We become justified by God's grace. Um, that's pretty much where God just makes us right. He makes us right in, his, in our eyes. We're a new creation in Christ. We're like a brand new creation. And when God looks at us, you know, he sees us as brand new and we are made right in his image. We are restored. What, um, not only restored, but we're brand new. We're a brand new creation. And uh, I started reading this book uh, just uh, last week about the Father's love. And um, in the book, there was an analogy about the difference that this justifying grace works. And I really liked it. It was really about, you know, like if you take a stick, if you have a stick and a light bulb, and you take a stick and you put it in the mud, right? Eventually, that mud is going to seep into um, the stick. And and when it seeps into the stick, it's like even when you wash the mud off of it, you still see the effects because it's, it's kind of penetrated into the wood, the mud. Um, and then that's kind of like our old self, you know, that we've been covered in this mud, the sin of life, and it, it penetrates into us and, it's, and it becomes part of us, you know. And then the light bulb is kind of like an analogy. If you think about a light bulb, <laughs> a light bulb, you know, they, it extends light. It's full of light. You turn the light bulb on and it's light. And if you put a light bulb in the mud, the great thing about the light bulb is the, when you take the light bulb out of the mud, there might be mud all over, but it is a light bulb and it is, it, the, it, the mud can't penetrate into the light bulb. So no matter what happens, the light is going to shine. The mud might um, keep some of it from reflecting, you know, um, but the light is going to continue to shine. You cannot turn the light off. Even when it's covered in mud, it's still now a light bulb reflecting uh, God's love and light. And as we get cleaned up in God, they call that, sanctifying grace and that's kind of where the mud gets um the mud kind of gets cleaned off from the light bulb and we become cleaner and brighter uh each each and every day and sanctifying grace um is where we grow and we become perfected in in god and even though we're already made right you know we're already made like right but or it starts to show in our outward actions and our words and the way we behave, the way we carry ourselves. So it start, what, what's inside us starts to become visible to the outside, to people. You know, it's, um, and this sanctifying grace, the thing about this grace is that it's something that we have to intentionally choose. You know, any any time God offers grace, grace is a, is a we have to respond to it. We respond to uh, grace. You know, with the provenient grace, we say yes. I want you to be my Lord. You know, through the justifying grace, we're made right, and the sanctifying grace, we have to continually say yes to God's grace working in our lives every single day. We can we can turn away from it, or we can walk towards it. Um, so it's a choice. It's a constant choice to say yes to God every single day. So Jesus, he came full of grace and truth. Jesus tells us uh, the truth. He tells us the truth about who we are in Christ. All we have to do is pick up the Bible. And there are plenty of things in the Bible that tell us the truth about who we are, that we are now God's children. You are a child of God. Um, and there's so many other truths about us in the Bible. Jesus leads us into all truth. You know, right now we're all, sometimes we say, a work in progress. Um, and the longer that we walk with Jesus, the more we um, follow him and continue to say yes to him and allow ourselves to be you know, our minds to be renewed by the reading of the word and things like that. Um, we just be, we begin to look more and more like Jesus. And the thing is, is we need, we need grace and truth. 
We need both of them together. We need grace and truth. And that's why Jesus came full of grace and truth. Because truth without grace is just mean. You know, if you tell someone <laughs> truth without grace, it's just downright mean. It can be mean. And, and grace without truth, grace without truth, the thing about that is it can lead someone to be eternally separated from God. It's like grace without truth can almost be like condemnation uh, where we leave someone um, in a state of not knowing the truth about who God is. That's why it's so important for us to share our faith, for us to be a living testimony about the work of God. So... Um, So as we continue here, hold on one second. I think I skipped. All right. So as we continue, um, again, we need both grace and truth. Um, and one of the things that I guess what, what I want to focus on for the next few minutes is that, you know, I think that God wants us to soak into this message. He wants us to realize, as I read the scripture again, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. So as we're transformed by God's grace and truth. You know, one of the things that he wants us to do with this is the first thing is to remember that God always wants us to dwell with him. Always. No matter how you're feeling, no matter what's happening in your day, God always wants to dwell with you. He is your constant source of help when you invite him in to be your Lord and Savior. The second thing is that in this scripture, he wants us to behold his glory. You know, John said in this passage, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son. They have seen it. And we can take time to behold his glory. And what I mean by that is sometimes, you know, just in your quiet time, like, you know, close your eyes and focus on Jesus, who he is and, his, and the glory of God, the goodness of God, the compassion of God, um, all the things that, you know, the ways that you've seen God working in the, in the past and the present, and we can trust that he's going to do that also in the future. We behold his glory and we, be tra we become transformed when we uh, focus on him and his glory, in his glory. The third thing, and I think the most practical thing we can do for other people is um, to extend grace and truth to other people. You know, Jesus sent, Jesus um, came full of grace and truth, and Jesus wants us to extend that grace and truth to others, especially right now in a world that is divided on many, many things. <laughs> You know, the best thing we can do is to extend grace to our fellow brothers and sisters, to extend grace to our neighbors and our coworkers, to extend grace, especially for those who disagree uh, with us, who, who believe differently to those. There's so many people that instead of extending grace, just want to cancel and shut people out. But we want to extend grace. We want to listen to one another, extend grace, and then we want to also extend truth, you know, in, in a graceful way, not by making people wrong, but just to be able to speak and to speak truth. And the best way to do that, I believe, is from your personal testimony to share, like, look, this is how um, God works in my life. When, when you share per personal testimony 
um, and you're sharing truth from your own life, you know, that's something that no one can take away from you. No one can take away from you. And people can receive that a lot better than if you're trying to point fingers at them. You know, truth <laughs> is the way that God uh, works in you and the way God has worked in your life in the past is, um, is a really important thing. And our, our world desperately needs that. So a question is, is this week, how can you be an instrument of grace and truth? How can when you're encountering people that God wants to dwell with, that you can be an instrument of grace and truth, that you can extend from within you what you have in you. You have, you carry God's grace and truth in you, the Holy Spirit. You carry his presence wherever you go. And then how can you extend that to other people? So I encourage us to think about that. And if we're in a position somewhere where we might feel like, you know what, I don't feel like I could extend grace at this moment. Um, the best thing to do is to be silent. The best thing to do is to be silent. So as we go from here, um, most importantly, I pray that if you're listening and you want to have that relationship with Jesus, that you would invite him into your heart. It will be the best decision that you've ever made. I know for me, um, for me it has been. And I think that the only other thing that's kind of popping in my mind right now is on those days when we're feeling down or we're doubting, uh, the best thing we can do is to pick up the Bible and read some of his truth. Read the stories about Jesus' compassion. Read those things that will encourage our soul um, so that we can, you know, continue to walk and shine our light brightly, especially when we've been faced with a disappointment and hurt. Uh, those are, you know, great things to remind us about God's goodness in our lives and everybody else's. So let's pray. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you for your presence with us right now. We thank you that you come to us in our, um, in our broken states and you want to dwell with us. We thank you for your kindness and your grace that we don't have to be perfect, that you're, the, you're what makes us perfect and right. Lord, we thank you that even when we make mistakes, you continue to say, it's okay, it's okay. Just get up and um, keep on walking forward. Keep, keep uh, being the best you you can be today. And, you know, God is our, our biggest encourager. So we, uh, we thank you, God, for every single person. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And we are so thankful that you chose to come into the world and that you chose to come into each of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working we make a miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are cuz you Wow, that's all I can say right now is wow. Totally, I was totally undone by that closing song. I didn't know that that's what they were singing, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. And I hope that you got, I know it's such an encouraging song. So God, we thank you that you are a way maker, that you walk through us, you walk with us, you make a way even in our most challenging days and our darkest times. We thank you, God, that you are constantly working even when we can't see you, even when we can't feel you. So if anybody, if you're out there in that position um, right now, you can just know that God is working. He is a way maker. He made a way so that Jesus could come into the world in grace and truth and 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 dwell with each and every one of us our other little problems that we have during the week you know what they're little in comparison for what he did so god we thank you and as we go from here let us go with the grace of god the truth and the love of god let it radiate and beam out of us and uh and when we don't see it coming out of others, help us to be an instrument of, of peace in their lives. So have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Some points to remember. We should always remember that God wants a relationship with us and for us to dwell with Him. God wants us to behold His glory. We need to extend God's grace and truth to other people around us. When was the last time you drew close to God in the person of Jesus, and how did it feel? How can we reflect God's glory to everyone we meet? Who will you share the grace and truth of God with this week? We're glad you stopped by today. Have you made a commitment to Jesus today, or would you like to? Do you want someone to talk to or pray with you today? Contact us at prayer at moreschapel.org. Let us help you with your next steps with Jesus. Contact us at info at moreschapel.org. Thanks for listening to the message. Click the subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates. We are located at 392 Blake Road, off Blue Ball Road, in Elkton, Maryland. Service times are 8.30 a.m. online and 9.30 and 11 a.m. live with masks. For more information, please visit www.morsechapel.org.